This, this, this is Trans Africa Radio. You arrive for your 11 p.m. set and then they tell you, we are running four hours late. Yazu Chabakafiana earlier on, so we had to put him in somewhere. Yeah. Has it happened to you? Yeah, a lot. So what do you do? Do you charge them extra? Uh, Name and shame, clear. <clears throat> Name and shame. No, 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 it's never about them. Mm-hmm. It's never about the promoter. It's about the 10,000 people who are there. So if it's essentially you have to just deliver and forget the squabbles. Yeah, you uh, see, you're nicer than I am because what I would do is say, uh, my manager will be calling you after this. Behind the scenes squabbles. There's so many behind the scenes squabbles that people get away with, promoters get away with because, you know, it's not about them, you know. It's if about you've got the 10,000 people there waiting for you, you have to deliver. Yeah. Talk to me about the the. Sometimes I've, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Sometimes I've played. Back then, like when I was still on the come up, you know, where the guy will say, "I'll pay you when you arrive," huh? and he doesn't pay, you know. Um, but I had a name already, you know, so you had you had you had a following that's there because they wanna see you. So I've 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 played, you know, and just satisfy the market because the audience is what matters really that's what they hope for the clear they hope that you'd come through and play for mahala and what you should have done is no hope is do. good <laughs> she's a very nice lady hope we in love every, her in everything we do you know there's hope in it you know i mean um i always say um my career is older than social media you know so i started back listen then. that is actually real yeah i started back then when um we released an on hunch and hope and belief you know and no opinions you know um one of the the the, the smartest phrases i've ever heard from the legend oskido because i've been blessed enough to work with him at at, at at yfm you know um and obviously pick his brain and stuff um he said if we were to allow the the people J, yeah into the studio no album would be released because everyone has their own taste yeah everyone has their own likes and dislikes so none of them would agree on that one song do you do you do you agree with the the idea that with uh taste there's no in issues of taste no one can ever have bad taste because it's so different i wouldn't say that i've i've my own phrase that i've coined um and it goes like this and i'll use you as an example Uh -uh. if i play you a if I play you an average song, but you've just won a hundred thousand rands, that song becomes the best song you've ever heard. True, because you're in a good mood. I want a hundred thousand good mood uh, yeah. issues. Yeah, and then obviously you'll start wondering two weeks later, what are the songs? Yeah, you not know? sure. But if I play you a very good song on a day where you've just lost a hundred thousand rands and you've just been dumped. That becomes a bad song. Okay. You know, so music goes with moods. So I always tell people, um, listen to it, listen to it again, listen to it again. So I mean, I usually when I listen to demos or, or not necessarily demos, if someone say, another artist gives me a song and says to me, what do you think? What I'll do is I'll leave it in the car. And uh, just before I switch off the car, I'll skip back. So it starts from the beginning then switch off the car. Obviously, tomorrow morning, I would have forgotten Guti. Uh, it's in the CD player. Yeah, you know, and uh, with me, I live in, the, the likelihood is that I'll probably use that car again after like two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when that happens and the song catches you off guard, how you feel then is the feeling that counts is I, what matters. I, I want to chat about a few things. I want to chat about a few myths. Then I want to talk about this idea of gom music because I've been, I've been, I'm a scholar of gom music now. Gom music. Uh, is, actually, let me tell you now, between me and you, ne, my poor tongue will not make it. Uh, comrade, try. Uh, okay. Gom. Gom. No, no, no. Don't fight with the volume. <laughs> Okay, because now you're going home. Okay, no. I need, to, I need to, I'm trying to get that, that, that thing that you have behind it's, yours. It's tongue action here. Ooh. Uh, sorry, sorry, it's a family station. <laughs> um, let me rephrase that. It's tongue palate action. Okay. Yeah. Gom. Gom. Yeah. Got it. Gom music. What's that look? He's going to say for the remainder of the hour. So we'll be talking about that and how it's replacing uh, quite the music because your genesis is in Quite Hill. And you've done quite a 
you know a lot for yourself. I think we know you better off as Guaito Bricks and 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 the team uh, are clear before we hear you in this. What's the music genre called? Oh, there we go. So when you come back after the break, I chat with DJ Cleo and I learn how to say that word. Okay, let's talk about this Kalinige. All right. Yeah, cool. So I want to understand what the 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 musical note that looks like a, a, a C on your jacket and your beanie is. It's a combination of a treble clef, mm-hmm. um, the letter C. For Cleo? Yes. Uh, the letter D and the letter J. So is it accurate for us to call you a music entrepreneur and not just a musician? Uh, There's what's, so many, there's, what's problematic with 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 that? Uh, uh, there's so many titles that people can bestow on me, you know, and I'll gladly accept some of them uh, or most of them. But um, it doesn't mean I see myself as some of those, you know. Some will say uh, jack of all trades, fine, but you know, and then others will say um, something else, you know. But it doesn't mean I see myself as those things I mean let's talk about the fact that you've been in the music industry now from my calculation it might be a bit inaccurate but from 2004 is the first time we heard about you right no Ilya um 2001 when was your first album release wasn't it 2004 2004 but yeah. I'd, I've been, I'd been in the scene releasing yeah. through different compilations I'm on Fresh House Flavor 5 which was 2003 uh, by DJ Fresh I'm on another DJ Fresh compilation 2002 and another one 2001 and so on Mzega Zega was 2002 I was on Trans Africa Radio 2002 Aha, what's wrong with you my so, so, why so, you so, want to so, do, so, so I, want, I, want, I wanted you on your own version to tell us that you actually started your career right here in the studio um, the radio career yeah, yeah. No, 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 I'm lying. No, this was Trans Africa Radio was one of my stepping stones. Okay, yeah, I actually I came here after YFM. Yeah, those other people that we don't talk about. <clears throat> oh, okay, yeah, them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go back two steps. I mean, you started off your, your whole career with the likes of Mzega Zega and with so for, for me, what's interesting, Cleo, is that you know, you already at the beginning had sort of a, a Weird mix of music that you were you were touching on. Fresh House Flavor was known as a house de- uh, a house uh, uh, album. Uh, Fresh is a house DJ at most times. Um, and then you're doing things with Mzege Zege, who I don't even think that he, what he was doing was what we perceived to, to be Kwaito to begin with. Because if you look at the Kwaito of um, people like Arthur and that that era in the in the early ni- like the mid 90s towards the, the latter part of that mm. was very different to the sound that you guys came into. Do you think that you guys were the second wave of Kwaito? Before we even get to you featuring on Flash, uh, Fresh House, yes, yes. In what sense? Especially me, you know, because obviously I, I lasted from then till now, you know. So um, the some that came in then, but maybe with the older sound, you know, and maybe that's why also they couldn't carry on and sustain or evolve with the sound. Yeah. But um, just bring them back close to me. Quito was born 1994 officially. Yeah, you know that's the official birth date. Um, but it had been there before. Um, the only thing is, before 94, obviously, guys were singing struggle songs. Yeah, you know, and yeah, man. So we were the second wave. And thing is, I I'm a musician before anything else. You know, so i play instruments so i understand the role of a tom drum in a song you know uh i don't just see it on a software and i don't know what it is and then it sounds cool in a song and you're just using it no i understand what different what roles different instruments play why what roles different microphones play and so on and why certain instruments are mic'd some are not some are acoustic and so on. I understand those things, you know, I understand the dynamics around that. And that's why you'll hear my music is very broad. I mean, I've worked with I've worked with Squatter Camp, I've worked with Jimmy Lulu, you know, I've worked with jazz musos that you don't even know. You know, um I've worked with Bess Roberts, you know, he plays brass, you know, he's from the UK. I've worked with, um, he plays harmonica. Yeah. Almost like Stevie Wonder, but like that, on that level, you know, um, I just forgot his name. And, you know, I've worked, I, I actually compiled a list of people I've worked with. And I think so, like five years ago, 
and it came to 91 five years 91 ago. yeah collaborations yeah yeah that's, that's platform that's... one i don't know if you know platform one your parents would know platform one i mean i'm i'm, I'm, I'm a not child. exposing my age they wanted to work with a young yeah. kid I mean, I right. they yeah. wanted to work with a young kid uh, okay yeah. okay no no you know you, you you were the young one in, yes. in, in the studio yeah. okay okay <laughs> you know we've got your bio right so i can i can't find out how old he is <laughs> so let's talk to me i mean i mean you say that you know you've worked with all these people i mean 91 yeah. people is, is a incredible feat in any in any uh, industry but let's talk about the how we start to find this idea of quiet because I find it very difficult for us to start I mean we're saying this off air to um, even start uh, putting a name to this idea of club music because I think not many artists I mean many musicians have the artistic know-how of understanding what the, the, the content of music is so unfortunately in like sort of the last year three four five years it's become easy to release music because you sort of you know create a beat you can do it in 10 Technology, minutes um, yeah. and then you get one line and a hook and then you get a bunch of girls in a swimming pool and you've got a music video <laughs> so i mean for people like you who've, 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 who've literally uh, stood the test of time quite door the genesis and the sound of quite door what makes it different uh to any other music genre before you even start defining what home music is <coughs> wow you are complicating my life right now. I like to. Um, because I've never really focused and, 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 and dwelled on the technical or semantics, you know, of Kwaito and what, what, is, uh, what goes into Kwaito. Remember, <clears throat> and I'll tell you this about the music industry, there's no formula to anything. There's no, there might be what you call a formula because it worked for you, you know, but it's not a formula. It's just a method that worked for you and you might try it again and it works and you might try it again and it works, you know, and it eventually becomes a formula, but there will come a time where it doesn't work and formulas, remember, work. One plus one is a formula. The answer is two. It's been one plus one before I was born. It will be one plus one. 20 generations after that's a formula you know so to this industry there's no formula and the landscape is forever changing yeah. the climate is forever changing you know i come from an era where as djs we used to play vinyl you know um and you weren't a dj if you didn't have vinyls therefore we had to buy vinyls you know and when that died cds came in now people can just write cds and call themselves djs you know, and now it's memory sticks. So that's why you've seen a proliferation of people who call themselves DJ. And suddenly there's a DJ in every block, in every township, literally. Some weekends I'm a DJ as well. You see? Yeah. And then some other weekends, Utli, you have heard. Yeah, no, very Leroy Kli, you. You know, so uh, it's, 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 it's hard for me to really answer the question and say, yeah. what defines Kwaito? It's very hard. Well, I mean, look at the, 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 the landscape of the time. I think uh, not so much in the technical definition of, you know, what is the tempo, what is the composition of the track. But, um, you know, you're an artist, I'm an artist. We all know that everything we do is to imitate what's happening outside. We are representing the conversations around, happening around us, the, the thoughts, the ideas around the people. So what was it that made this new genre of com come through? Because I find it so interesting that it, there's, you know, quite was there, you know, we had new age music it was for the youth of the time we were tired of apartheid songs and we created our own genre and the music yeah. resonated with us and now you know 20 odd years later past the apartheid struggle what's happening to give birth to this new genre of music uh home is not new home yeah it's not new it's 2017 nah? i'm gonna Go back to 2013. Yeah. 2014. I had a... 2014, yes. 2014, I released an album, and track 12 on the album is called Ikom. Okay. This is 2014. But the song was done 2012. Okay, so we're sitting five years ago here. Yeah. But it's 2017. So just to give an idea, Gom is not new. You know, Gom has always been there. It's just changed shape and form. You know what I mean? Big Nas were doing it, Gom. Even though they called it Durban Quite. Yeah. You know, so don't be lied to. Don't be fooled by people saying, yo, Gom, the new wave. No, it's not new. So it isn't a new, a new... No, no, no. Not at all. 
Is there new music? Is there a new genre of music around in the world? I asked that because someone said yes, to me that. Yes, no. Yeah. Music has been exhausted. Yeah. Yes. Remember, there's only eight scales. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. So everyone has a do in their song. And somewhere there's a me. Exactly. Music has been exhausted. You know, so genre is is up to where Naguti, what do you want to call yourself? If tomorrow you drop an album and you call it uh, Suki Suki Koma Dance. Koma Dance, that's the track. And it blows, that's it. Suki Suki Koma Dance. And someone else who can do the similar th- sound that you do because it's not too different and not too complex, they'll do it and call themselves the, the prince of Suki Suki Koma Dance because you're the king. Yeah. You know what I mean? 